we were meant to be on tour in Ireland. Uh, the, our tour in Ireland has got cancelled about three times. And uh, so we're in, we've got four dates in Ireland next week up in the north, but all the ones down in the south we couldn't do because the venues were still closed. And I suddenly thought, I know where we could come back and do our first gig. Let's see if they'll have us in Hammersmith. And so it worked out, didn't it? Yeah, it did, really short absolutely. notice, actually. Yeah, absolutely. It's very uh, humbling to be able to, like, after uh, all, everything that's happened for the last 20 months, to come back out and be among folk again. And, um, you know, um, everyone has a different view on, on where we are right now, but I, I just think that going forward, it's, it's hugely important to get culture and creativity out among the people to make sense of, because we don't know, we're not in control of anything. Yeah. So mu music is a way of, of, uh, of uh, uniting. Uh, st Fluke started, you know, a lot of bands do start in bars and sessions yeah. and stuff, but because we all came from different musical lines, you know, um, it was it was a, a kind of the concept of a friend of ours uh, called Becky Morris who lived in London at the time. We were three flute players at the time, so there was yeah there was Brian and me and Mike McGoldrick. So it was all about having these three flute players playing together. It was a very specific idea she had. Uh, yeah. And Mike stayed with us for two years or something, did he? Yeah, yeah, we, we yeah we did a lot of work, and it was great because at the start Mike had just won the BBC Young Musician of the Year, and as a vehicle for that his his award. For the following year, um, you know, he got to play on big platforms, at Cambridge Folk Festival, Sidmouth, and we were his band. Michael became too busy, and we wanted to do more. And he, yeah, he was doing his own thing. And we think, who can we replace Michael with? And do we need another flute player? Really, do we need to have three flute players in this band? And at that point, John Joe, maybe he'd come and guested on a few gigs. And um, I think we just thought, wouldn't it be great to have just John Joe in the middle of this sound, just powering it along? And ever since John Joe joined, which was 1998-99, we have not changed the same four people. On the top, the, the, everything else sounds schmorken, but uh, just a little bit more attack on the top and maybe just a little bit more in the wedge. Ed is just, he's, he's our linguist and our, our, our you know, charming gu guitar player, he's, he's brilliant, like he's, there's no one like Ed, he comes from Bath, grew up, you know, listening to John Renburn, a lot of, he's a really brilliant, Pierre Ben Suzon, great finger picker, and um, yeah, there's a lot of, he's influenced a whole, an entire generation of young players who want to play like him, so he's right. the quiet man of the top echelon. First time we went made a studio album was uh, it was great. We went to Real World, Peter Gabriel's. So that was 1999. The album's called Flatfish. Slight difference in the size of the hall, but there That's we true. <laughs> I don't think there was ever any uh, uh, premeditated game plan, master plan for any of the music. Well, we once had an agent who was literally banging his head off the floor because he thought, guys, you need to have, you need to have a, you know like a, a goal that we're aiming towards instead of seasonal, you know, just making it up and enjoying it as you go. Um, but that was always, the, and maybe that's what people got in Fluke, was that, you know, we, we weren't driven and we weren't ambitious for, each, for ourselves. We were ambitious for the music, but we, we just wanted to have fun. Lots of people also wanted, said you should have a singer, you know, if you were going to be successful, you would need to have a singer. And uh, I think the thing about Fluke that makes us special is that it's four people and we're, we're equal parts in a conversation. I mean, we do different things. Brian's doing the high, fast stuff. I'm often doing the stuff underneath and then Ed and John Joe are the powerhouse in the middle. But we're all talking to each other all of the time. And you could look at anyone, I think, on stage at any time and hopefully you'd be relatively entranced by everybody, not just everyone looking at the singer in the middle of the stage. I think that's... From, from from our history, from the stuff that I listened to and Sarah listened to and Ed and John Joe, you know, that's what makes Fluke unique because John Joe would have listened to a lot of drummers, um, a lot of Indian music, and uh, um, so you kind of ingest it over over a lifetime and then it just kind of clangs around and comes up, surfaces in this certain um, tune or the way that you colour it or 
Yeah, it's as again, you know, it's very organic with Luke because we don't really, you know, we don't try and sit there and think, let's write a jazz tune or let's write, do something that's rocky or indie or trad. We're not that clever and the music writes the rules. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage, Fluke. After all this time, we were we were sitting doing a wee interview um, just before uh, after sound check, thinking back because uh, I think it was one of our very first gigs, 25 years ago. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, and uh, all the the uh, the way that the centre has evolved and look at look at how beautiful this place is and and what a great place to start back after all this time. Here's uh, a set of two tunes, one from my right, from the lovely Sarah, Alan, and one from my left, the equally lovely Brian Finnegan. Sarah's tune is called The Bunting Fund, written to uh, celebrate uh, the fantastic street party that uh, under normal circumstances happens every summer on her, her uh, street, uh, not too far from here. 5.7 miles, according to my sat -nav. and. Uh, Brian's tune is written for our dear friend from Tokyo, uh, Yoko, and we found, last time we were over there, we found out that uh, one of the meanings of her name, Yoko, was Ocean Child. So that's what it's called, Ocean Child.
all right.